What's up guys, Viper FPV here, and today we're going to be setting up Betaflight 4.2. That's right, Betaflight 4.2 has actually just been released, it's actually been released now for a week or two now, and we're going to be going right into flashing up your flight controller into um, setting up the entire software, uh, so you can get up and flying right away. So what we really need to go into is what really changed from Betaflight 4.1 to 4.2. Not really much. They they changed a lot of things under the hood, so it's a lot more efficient. Uh, they changed um, how you actually do rates. Um, you still do have the old rate system, but if you want to switch over to the new rate system, I'll show you that. Um, and then they also do have um, voltage compensation, especially helpful if you're on 4S. So you know how they have that battery sag at the end of your pack. Um, so they have that as well in Betaflight 4.2. So I'll be uh, leaving a link um, to some more information on Betaflight down below uh, but if you found this video helpful go ahead and subscribe and uh, give this video a like so let's go ahead and get on with the tutorial and flashing Betaflight 4.2 alright so the first thing we need to go ahead and do is go over to the Betaflight configurator page and I'll be leaving a link to this um, page along with the Betaflight github if you need it along with the Betaflight 4.2 tuning notes and what we need to do here on this page is just kind of scroll down to the bottom and download the version of the configurator that is made for your computer. Um, now this could be 10.7.1.2 by the time this video is released or it could even be um, a couple months down the line. It's just the bug fixes. So as long as you have 10.7.x, whatever it is, you should be fine. So go ahead and download that and then install it on your computer. I've already installed it. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right over to Betaflight. All right, so you'll come up to this screen. Now, if this is your first time setting up Betaflight, you will need to install these drivers right here or you will not be able to communicate with your flight controller. So if you are, like I said, we'll reiterate this again. If you, this is your first time setting up Betaflight, you do need to make sure that you have these drivers installed on your computer. Um, so once you have done that, go ahead and connect your flight controller up to the computer. So I'm gonna do that first. Plug that in. All right, and then what we're gonna do, because I don't remember what kind of flight controller this is, so I'm gonna go ahead and connect to Betaflight, and then come over to the CLI, and I'm gonna type in version. And then this tells me I'm doing this on a T-Motor F7 right here. And then if you're coming over from a previous version of Betaflight, um, you can go ahead and make a backup of your um, your configuration file, but do not carry it over. It's just good to have a backup just in case you do want to go back. Um, and the only thing you have to do to do that is just go and type in diff all. And right here, you can go ahead and copy this to a WordPad or something like that so you have a copy of all the settings you've changed. Um, so I've already went ahead and did that actually already. What we're going to be doing here is coming over to CLI again. Well, we're still in CLI, but we're going to type in BL, and this is going to put the flight controller into bootloader mode. And you can tell it's in bootloader mode because it'll say DFU right here in the top right. And we're going to come over to the firmware flasher. And then what we want to do is make sure that our proper flight controller is selected. Now you might have to pick it um, according to what your flight controller is, but mine's a T-Motor F7, so I'm gonna flash that and flash 4.2.0. Now yours might be newer, like just like the configurator, it could be 4.2.1.3.4, but this the configuration and setup should all be the same. Um, what we're gonna do here is click on that, and we're gonna click on flash um, load firmware online, and then we're gonna click on flash firmware. And then this is gonna erase it, and then it's gonna go ahead and install an update. So I'll be right back in a minute. All right, so flashing is completed, and you can tell by the green bar here on the bottom says program successful. So then what we're gonna do is we're going to come over to the welcome page, and then we're gonna go ahead and connect. And it's gonna ask to apply the custom defaults. Yes, you wanna apply the custom defaults. Let's click on close because it's not noticing an ESC protocol. 
Um, so the first thing we need to do is calibrate our accelerometer. Now, if you're not using um, any type of leveling feature at all, um, where it uses the accelerometer, then you don't have to really worry about doing this part because you're going to disable it probably anyways. But if you are using any leveling feature like angle mode, horizon mode, um, GPS, all that stuff, you need to calibrate your accelerometer or, or the quad won't even arm because the, cel the accelerometer has never been calibrated. So you need to calibrate it first. And the way you do that is just place your quad on a level surface and then just click on calibrate accelerometer. And then that's done. So then you can go ahead and um, go over to the ports tab. Now on my flight controller, I have I know how I have it wired up. So this is gonna be specific for me, but if you have yours wired differently, it's gonna be different. So on my flight controller, how I have it wired is I have my receiver on UART2, and then I have my smart audio on UART3. Um, and that's all you have to do is click on save and reboot. Then we're gonna connect again, and we're gonna go over the configuration page. Now this is where um, you have to make a decision. If you're gonna be using RPM filtering, which I strongly suggest you are if you are using BHELI32 ESCs, um, I do have a full guide on setting up RPM filtering, and I'll leave a link to that down below. Um, but we're gonna set it up right here too. Um, it's just that it gets in a little more depth and goes in a little more detail, so I'll leave a link to that down below. But on the F7 flight controller, we can run this at 8K. Um, if you're on an F4, run it at 4K. Uh, 8K will be too much for it and possibly can cause some issues, especially with arming, because the CPU utilization down here would be too high. So I'm on an F7 flight controller, so I'm gonna use eight kilohertz right here for the pit loop. And then I'm not using the accelerometer, so I'm just gonna go ahead and disable those because I just use fly this quad in um, rate mode. And then I'm gonna go over here to ESC protocol and I'm gonna select DSHOT 600. Now, if you're using a F4 processor and you're doing 4K here, you just need to go ahead over here and select DSHOT 300. Um, and then once you have that, you're good. And then we can go ahead and come over here to bi-directional DSHOT. This will enable the ESCs to do RPM filtering. Um, if this is your first time as well, um, you do need to make sure that your motor poles are correct. You have to count the magnets on your motor, on one motor, and then just put that number in here. For all five inch quads, it should be 14 poles. <clears throat> Craft name, I'm just gonna put my tag there. And then here for receiver, since I'm using a Crossfire receiver, I'm gonna use SBUS and then Crossfire. If you're using Spectrum, you would use SBUS, or if you're using um, IBUS, you would just select the correct one you're using. So Crossfire is what I'm using, and then I do want to use telemetry, so I'm going to enable telemetry that lets um, like voltage and stuff go to my radio from the receiver. And then also here, I like to set my RX set so I don't have a beeper on board, but I can use the motors to beep when I set the aux channel, so I'm going to use that. And then that's pretty much it for the configuration page. So I'm gonna click on save and reboot. Power and battery don't really have to do anything in here. Um, this is all, the defaults are perfect. So I'm gonna come over to the pit tubing tab. And we don't wanna touch anything here because we wanna leave this all in default and fly it and see how it does. But my rate profile, I do want to change, and I'm going to change it to my rates that I specifically use. If you use different ones, then you can use different ones as well. Um, if you want to copy my rates, you're more than welcome to do that. So I use 1.05 on each one. And then 0.79. Well, so let me do it. 0.79. 0.79 and then for expo I do 0 0.30 on all three all right so we have that set so I'm gonna click on save there now the filter settings I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to my page since we're using rpm filtering we are going to need a grab this right here. So we need to set our dynamic notch width to zero. It's right here, dynamic notch filter. We can go here to zero. And then we also can go over to dynamic notch Q and this will be 250. There we 
There you go. And that's how you this um, you just have to change this because you're using the RPM filtering, so you don't need to have the dynamic notch um, so aggressive in how it's filtering. So you can cut that back. That's what the reason is for this. Um, once that's done, we're going to click on save. And then we're going to come over to the receiver tab. So let me go ahead and power my radio on. It's going to get a little bit noisy because Crossfire just kind of messed with my microphone. So but I'm going to power on my radio here. And then I'm going to plug in a battery. Okay. So as I smooth the sticks, you can see I, right now it's wrong. So I'm moving my throttle stick and it's showing the roll. Um, so what I'm going to do is I need to change the channel map. I know this one is it, T-A-E-R, one, two, three, four, and I'm going to click save. And then when I click the throttle, it should go up. Now, if you notice here, when I put my sticks in the middle, everything's pretty much at 1500. Um, and then when I deflect it, it's at 2001, 2000, and then 1000 at the bottom. You do need to make your sticks show this. This is what Betaflight expects. Um, so I do have a video on calibrating your stick endpoints on your radio, and I will leave a link to that down below. Um, but I strongly recommend it because if you don't have this done correctly, the quad won't even arm because if the throttle is wrong, the throttle is wrong. It can also cause a lot of uncharacteristic uh, char characteristics with the quadcopter you might not want when you're flying it, especially if it's drifting. Um, so we have that done already, the other receiver tab. I do use RSSI. Usually I set this to my channel uh, 12 on my receiver so I can get RSSI. On my modes tab, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on add range and then I'm just going to click on my arm switch. So I'm setting up my switches right now on my radio which I already have done. And if this is your first like quad copter and you don't have your switches set up on your radio, I do have a video as well on that. Um, so I have my arm switch there. I'm going to click on save and then I just set up Two more switches i set up my beeper and i also set up my flip over after crash um so i'm gonna click on that set up that there and then i'm gonna come over to my beeper there we go this will be aux three or aux two okay and we'll put that over here like so and click save. So I got all my switches set up. Now you'd add the switches according to what you want on your flight controller or on your quadcopter. Um, those are the three main ones I use. Now over the motors tab. Now if you're setting up a new quadcopter, you do need to run through this. Um, what you need to do if you're setting up a brand new quadcopter is come over here to make sure your props are removed off of the quadcopter before you do this. Plug your battery in and all that. Um, and then just run these motors to make sure that they match. So when you spin motor one, this motor spins and it spins this way. Uh, same thing for motor two, it hits this one and spins this way. If it does not spin the correct way, you will need to go into B Heli and correct it. Um, just because the quadcopter will freak out if you try to arm it with them the wrong way. Um, so I already done that on this quadcopter to save time. Um, but then what we can go ahead and do is we go over to the OSD tab and then set up your OS, my OSD. Um, what you do here is just grab like this warning indication. I'll just move that up to where I want it, which would be about right there. And then I also do want to have a few more things. I do want to have my battery. Let me it's under cell count. Oh, I do want my timer. And I do want to have my RSSI. And I also want, there we go, battery average level. I like to use that one. So I'm going to put this down here. And then this right here. I just know where these go. You probably need to put your goggles on to know exactly where you want them if this is your first time. But I know kind of where I have it. Um, so that's pretty much all you have to do in here to set up your OSD so you can see what you see in the goggles. So we click on that and click save. Now the video transmitter. This is where we have our VTX tables. So we actually, I like to do this in CLI because it's so much easier. Um, 
I actually have a full video on VTX tables and how to set that up. So I'll leave a link to that down below. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my dump, like the backup I made. So I'm going to grab, here we go. And I'm going to grab my VTX tables for my backup. This is why it's good to kind of back up your stuff. So I'm going to copy that, that right there. And click on that there. And then hit save. And then we got our VTX table set up. All right, so that should do it for the Betaflight 4.2 initial setup guide. Um, I appreciate you guys watching my video and um, hope this helped you all out with setting everything up. Um, but if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel, give this video a like. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you guys in a future video. Peace.